Well, for decades, the Texas tarpon has been a captivating mystery for many, and if a fisherman caught one, well, it even gave them bragging rights. But that has now changed. Experts say overfishing and issues with the habitat itself are to blame for a decline in the population. It has folks at the Heart Research Institute looking into what all is behind it. 3 News reporter Natalia Osuna spoke with those researchers and also local fishermen to find out how the species is doing. Natalia? Mike, well, from Port Aransas, once being called Tarpon, to the massive scales on the walls of their iconic Tarpon Inn, to anglers traveling here just to have a chance to fight and catch a massive Silver King, Tarpon has had a long history here in Texas Gulf Coast. So when the Tarpon fishery collapsed in the 1950s, it left many scientists looking for answers, and some are looking now in our own backyard. When President Franklin D. Roosevelt came to Port Aransas on a fishing trip in 1937, tarpon was all the rage. It's not every day you can see the President of the United States land a big fish. It's not every day he catches one, even on a fishing trip to the Gulf. But that great 80-pound tarpon they're landing is enough to make any angler's heart glad and his cup of joy run over. Oh, only a little one, eh? But those glory days are now over, as the Coastal Bend's tarpon population has gone down. Avid fisherman John Blaha with the Coastal Conservation Association says tarpon is hard to find. It's been something that's been in my blood all the time. He says it's not like it used to be. Part of the, of, of the tourist economy in Port Aransas was a tarpon. If you go to the tarpon motel and to their lobby, they got a whole wall and it's all just tarpon scales that people put up there dating back prior to the 30s, 40s. Dr. Matt Strike at the Heart Research Institute is leading a study looking at juvenile tarpon populations in the area. In Texas, there's really no information on you know, what constitutes good habitat for juvenile tarpon. Putting in a lot of hours of field work. Doing some mark recapture tagging. Uh, just putting in like a microchip, a pit tag, kind of like your pet would get. Um, and when we recapture a fish, we scan it and we can see if it's been caught before or not. During that field work, Dr. Strike and his team also focus on data collection. We're looking at growth rates and, you know, combining all that information, occurrence, abundance and growth, we can try to get an estimate of, you know, what's good versus low quality habitat for future conservation efforts. Dr. Strike says catch and release is the best practice nowadays, and Blaha agrees, encouraging other local fishermen to be mindful on the water. It's a sport fish. Let's respect that and, and let's take care of them. And heart, HRI researchers tell me the project is ongoing and part of a larger study on tarpon. It has multiple phases and will continue for several years, but they expect to have one survey's results soon in early 2026. In the meantime, they encourage anybody who enjoys fishing to follow best practices to help conserve tarpon across the coastal bend. Mike.